Well, I want to wish you all a good afternoon and, and welcome to this very special gathering. My name is Stephen Clayton. Bon après-midi tout le monde et bienvenue à cet événement très spécial. We're here next to Scutic, the St. Croix River in the ancestral, unceded territory of the Pescatumacati people who have been here for countless generations along the river, in the lands throughout the watershed and on the bay. Nous nous trouvons ici à côté de Scoutic, la rivière Sainte-Croix, dans les territoires traditionnels non cédés des Pescomotcati qui ont habité cette région depuis des temps immémoriaux. I would like to begin the day by asking Sakom Hugh Akaji, chief of the Pescoto Mukati First Nation, and Ed Purley, Wolastikwe elder from the Tobik First Nation, if they would come forward and kindly open the afternoon for us. My heartfelt thanks to everyone who has shown up for this lovely event. We are so looking forward to it. I would like to welcome those who may be strangers to the territory and congratulate those who are part of the territory for the dedication you've shown because I know there's been a lot of support for this project and with good reason. I would like to acknowledge that I have two of my elders uh, councillors sitting on, on my right or standing at this point and I'd like to welcome my staff who have shown up in numbers to enjoy the event but most of all I would like to thank the elder Mr. Edward Purley and his uh, associate Ken Paul for coming to us from the Tobique. When you do ceremony it has to have language and the language is embedded in such elders as the ones I've just mentioned. So it's very precious for me to have them present for, for this event. And this event is not just here. I think everyone knows, you've read enough books, you know the history. This man, Mr. Ganong, he walked every inch of this province. He met our people. He went to the Tobik. He stood on Mount Carlton and he wrote an incredible history and it was respectful and that's why we're here folks thank you very much for the inclusion and with that i will introduce elder ed Purley. and thank you very much ed again for the honor of having you here Because the uh, well is well open, we're going to greet you and welcome you here today in the home of what we call the Squab Nagig, this people of the dawn, which also includes the Pasmo Kwadiig, to celebrate and to honor Mr. William F. Ganon today. It's important that we acknowledge people that made contributions. It's also important to acknowledge our ancestors. It's important to acknowledge our grandparents and our parents who was responsible for bringing us all here together on this beautiful land we call Squab Nagi. It's also significant and historical that the town of St. Stephen and the organizers and the family of Mr. Ragon that they would include the first people that lived and occupied this land some hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. I believe that's important to acknowledge, like the same way we're acknowledging Mr. Gadon today for his many contributions that he made into this beautiful home, which is called New Brunswick today. The song I'm gonna share, it's also in what we call the Elagomog language, which means 
they say the Algonquin, but it's Elagomo. It's our, it's related languages because we're all related. So this song I share is to honor again, Mr. Ganon, his family, and also it's important to acknowledge each and in, in every one of ours existence. So we'll leave one.
conclude it, in closing, I just like would, would like to say to each and every one of you here today, if nobody told you they love you, I want each and every, every one of you to know that we love you. We'll leave you in. Thank you. Thank you, that was beautiful. The man whose life and work we're here to honor, William Francis Ganong, was deeply shaped by his upbringing in this community and its natural environment. L'homme dont nous sommes ici pour célébrer la vie et l'œuvre, William Francis Ganong, a vécu des expériences profondément formatrices dans cette communauté et dans son environnement naturel. He moved to St. Stephen from St. John at the age of nine with his parents and younger siblings. His father James and his uncle Gilbert founded the renowned, the renowned chocolate making company, but it soon became clear that William Ganong would pursue a different path. In his teenage years, he was already exploring along the St. Croix River, collecting and classifying rocks, insects, plants. He organized and led camping and canoeing expeditions with friends and with his brother Edwin up the river to the Chipunetacook Lakes, to the tops of local hills, and out on Passamaquoddy Bay. He was curious about the mollusks and other organisms living on the sea floor below the intertidal zone. So he devised a simple dredge and towed it behind a small sailboat. And he began a field journal, recording his observations and making maps and sketches. This is how and where it began for him. This afternoon, we're very fortunate to have several people with us who will offer perspectives on William Ganong and his work and on how this remarkable sculpture took shape as a gesture of homage, homage, not only to the man, but also to the journey, the journey that he took, but also the journey that he urged us to take, to discover and know the breadth and depth and richness of our history and place. Now, I'd like to call now on the mayor of St. Stephen, Alan McCackern, who's been a great supporter of this project from the outset and a member of the steering committee that guided it to say a few words. Mayor McEckern. Welcome everyone. Uh, it's uh, following uh, Hugh Akaji and, uh, and the, the elders and, and, and uh, as Ed, Ed, Ed Perley that listening to their, their uh, music and uh, it, it, it uh, gets you quite emotional actually. So, and then when I'm up here uh, with no, no words to read, so that even makes it worse. So, and uh, anyways, uh, I, I, first of all, I, I, I can't believe how realistic this statue is. It's just, it's amazing the detail. And uh, it's, not what, it's, it's not what I expected actually. It's, 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 it's more than what I anticipated. So, uh, what, what, what I do know of William Francis Ganong uh, that really stands out to me is, uh, is, is how he interacted with the people that are around him and, and his passion. And then that, that brings me to also the not, to not to talk about William, but talk about the group of people that brought this here today and their passion. Uh, I really want to recognize all those people because they, uh, they really do a lot for our community. I mean, look, 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 at, look. It's just, again, I get emotional talking about it, but look, look how everything's all pulling together here. It's, you know, a lot has happened. This, this, pave, this asphalt is, uh, is not even two days old, and the, and the new wharf is right here to, to my left. It's all tying together nicely, and, uh, and, and I really, you know, as mayor, I, I couldn't do any of that without the help of all those people, and they're out there, and you guys all deserve recognition, just like William Francis Ganon's getting here today, too. And, uh, and uh, maybe there'll be a statue for one of you guys someday. And I'd be honored to be here supporting that as well. So yeah, so I'd also like to take a minute and, and, uh, and also thank uh, the, the town for, for, for their contribution to this. 
uh, and the staff, you know, that this stuff doesn't all just fall together like you see it today. So it's, you know, I appreciate everything that they have done. And I also want to acknowledge the, the province uh, for, for their contribution to this as well and the, and the federal, and they're both here today. Kathy Bacchus and uh, John Williamson are both there right in front of me there. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so anyways, I guess, uh, you know, something like this, it takes like something like this to get us all together. And, uh, and it's really nice to see everyone here today. You know, it's a beautiful day. My, you know, minus the wind, it's actually quite nice. And uh, so anyway, I appreciate everything. And I, oh, and, and I appreciate all the work and the passion and the love that the sculpture you have put into this as well. And it's, a, it's amazing, you know. I don't know how you, get, how you can walk away and, and, and leave something here in, in St. Stephen and not take it home with you. But, but anyway, I appreciate that too. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor McEachern. Well, to pick up the thread of the adventures of young William Ganong, we'd left him in a small sailboat trawling for bottom-dwelling marine life. As it turned out, his very first publication was titled On the Invertebrate Animals of Passamaquoddy Bay. It appeared in the Bulletin of the Natural History Society of New Brunswick in 1885, while he was an undergraduate student at the University of New Brunswick in Fredericton. By this time, he had also become intensely interested in the mapping and description of the Acadian region by early explorers and traders. The sparks of this interest, by his own acknowledgement, were his boyhood trips on the St. Croix River. These had interest introduced him to St. Croix Island and its riveting, but at the time, largely neglected history as the site of the first attempted French settlement in North America, north of Florida. Over his lifetime, he would become a leading and an acclaimed scholar on the early mapping of the Atlantic coast of Canada. His versatility and productivity are astonishing. And many of his works are of enduring importance. It's very hard to briefly convey their range. Fortunately, there are two fine books about William Ganong that have been published in the past several years and I warmly recommend both of these to anyone wishing to learn more about Ganong's life and work. The first, titled The Lost Wilderness, Rediscovering W.F. Ganong's New Brunswick, is a very personal account of the author Nicholas Guitard's retracing of Ganong's travels through the hinterlands of the province. The second book, by Ronald Rees, is a wide-ranging and insightful biography titled New Brunswick Was His Country, the life of William Francis Ganong. And both of the authors are with us here today, and both have been part of the committee guiding the sculpture project. After his graduation from UNB, Ganong went off to Harvard, and it was there that his interest in botany came to the fore. A decade later, he was appointed as the first professor of botany and director of the Botanical Garden at Smith College in Massachusetts he held this position for 38 years, authoring several influential textbooks and groundbreaking studies of plant morphology, physiology, and ecology. The respect he earned among his colleagues was reflected in his election in 1908 as president of the Botanical Society of America. Throughout his years at Smith, William Ganong returned every summer to New Brunswick not just for a few weeks, but the entire summer, to continue the explorations he had begun as a teenager. He canoed all of the province's major rivers and tributaries, trekked hills and coastlines, and sought out ancient portage routes. The detailed notes, measurements, and maps he made during these marathon wilderness trips were distilled into nearly 140 published articles under the heading Notes on the Natural History and Physiography of New Brunswick. Separate studies that he carried out of the vegetation of the Tantramar marshes, Fundy coastal bogs, and forest succession on Misku Island in northeastern New Brunswick became classics of North American plant ecology and are still regularly cited in scientific publications. William Ganong was drawn to the cultural landscapes of New Brunswick as much as he was 
to its physiography through exchanges and friendship with Wallastikwe, Pescot Omukadi, and Mi'kmaq elders, and many other correspondents, he assembled a rich archive of material relating to indigenous place names for rivers, lakes, and other geographical features. This often meant deconstructing highly altered English or French renditions of these names and attempting to illuminate their original forms, meanings, and associations. I'd like to call now on Rebecca Moffat, who is the president of the board of directors of the New Brunswick Museum. I'm sure those of you in St. Stephen uh, also know her as the director of the Chocolate Museum here and a history teacher at St. Stephen's University. We're delighted that she'll speak to us today. Uh, Rebecca Moffat. Thank you, Mr. Clayton. Hello, bonjour. I am pleased to be here today representing the board of directors and staff of the New Brunswick Museum. Je suis fier d'être parmi vous aujourd'hui pour représenter le conseil d'administration et le personnel du Musée du Nouveau Brunswick. I would like to acknowledge the Ganong family, as well as the other distinguished guests present here today. I would like to congratulate the Project Steering Committee, which included wide representation on this unveiling of the William Francis Ganong sculpture. In this regard, I also want to acknowledge and recognize Chief Hugh Akaji, who as well as serving on the Project Committee is on the New Brunswick Museum's Board of Directors. I would also like to recognize Stephen Clayton, a former member of our staff and now a research association, or sorry, associate at the New Brunswick Museum who has also played a key role. In addition to various other museum, pardon me, in addition, various other museum staff have also been involved with this project in a variety of roles. Tracing its roots back 178 years, the New Brunswick Museum is the provincial museum and one of New Brunswick's leading institutions and, and cultural significant institutions. It is dedicated to collecting, preserving, researching, understanding, and exhibiting the material, cultural, and natural history of New Brunswick. And this work continues and, and evolves. Interestingly, William Francis Ganong was among the earliest and most forceful advocates for establishing a provincial museum and archives. He played a key role in launching of the New Brunswick Museum and its 1834 purpose-built facility on Douglas Avenue in St. John. As part of this advocacy, Mr. Ganong offered the museum his unrivaled collections of primary source material relating to the history of New Brunswick, along with his personal library, artworks, and other material. As such, the museum holds significant archival material, including professional and personal correspondence of William Francis Ganong and his family. Mr. Ganong's research notes, notebooks, and scrapbooks cover a wide range of topics, including botany, cartography, zoology, natural history, indigenous place names, etc., with a strong emphasis on New Brunswick and further material on Nova Scotia, Maine, and Quebec. As well as his survey equipment, the New Brunswick Museum also holds the Ganong Photograph Collection, consisting of almost 2,000 images that constitutes a unique record of late 19th and early 20th century New Brunswick. We are proud to hold and make available this material that helps tell the story of New Brunswick and its related regions. William Francis Ganong's primary motivation as a collector of objects, memories, and stories was to preserve rapidly disappearing evidence and knowledge of New Brunswick's cultural history. As such, the New Brunswick Museum is excited to have provided input on this project and to be here for this unveiling. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Merci, Wuliwan. Thank you. I would now like to invite Monsieur Maurice Basque, historian and scientific advisor at the Institute of Acadian Studies the Institut d'études acadiennes at the Université de Moncton to comment on William Ganong's contributions to knowledge of, of the Acadian settlement of New Brunswick. 
Nous sommes honorés de votre présence, M. Basque, et nous, et nous vous remercions d'avoir accepté d'offrir quelques mots sur les contributions de William Glenong à la connaissance de l'histoire de l'Acadie. Merci beaucoup, M. Clayton. Members of the people of the Don, M. le maire, members of the Ganong family, distinguished guests, mesdames et messieurs, I am very honored and privileged to be here this afternoon to this official unveiling of this magnificent work of art. William Francis Ganong appartient, bien sûr, de façon particulière à cette région ici du Nouveau-Brunswick en quelque sorte à sa rivière, à sa communauté, sa famille est encore très connue, non seulement dans notre province, mais à l'international. But William Francis Ganong also belongs to the entire province, to the members of the different First Nations that he met regularly, to the Acadians and to other groups. Il était très curieux de l'histoire et de la culture des Acadiens, en particulier des Acadiens de la péninsule acadienne. He is well known as an internationally renowned botanist, cartographer. He was interested in linguistics as a historian, but he also had a very specific keen interest for the different communities, Acadian communities, in the Acadian peninsula. He wrote many historic monographs, donc il a publié sur Caraquet, Chipagan, Miscou, Pokmosh, Tracadie, Tabazantak, Neguac. Even today, those different historic monographs that he wrote remain the basis of so many actual research publications. My colleague from Université de Moncton is here with me today, uh, sociologist Matthew Wade. Uh, we're working on a project on Kent County, on the place names of Kent County, on identities in Kent County. Ganong is still very uh, a contemporary source for us. All his research on the place names of the province, of the rivers, of the mountains. Uh, I call him New Brunswick's Renaissance man. He is so difficult to even capture in a single book that the, uh, our two authors here have so magnificently rendered in their publication. Uh, he is an exceptional man. He is a man that did not, uh, was not afraid to go and meet different groups to question them, but mostly to listen to them. God knows we need more William Francis Ganong today in our province. And I believe that maybe he should be known province-wide, not only on the Anglophone side, uh, maybe a prize could be named after him to try to foster good scholarship and school projects about New Brunswick in our different schools to get him know. He was a bridge builder, à ma connaissance, uh, and he is someone that uh, inspire us, I believe, as a people, as a province. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, M. Basque. Darren Byers and Fred Harrison were commissioned to create this wonderful sculpture of William Ganong, not only on the basis of their previous work, but also because of their keen appreciation of Ganong's life and interests. Among many other works, they created the striking sculpture of Northrop Fry, another remarkable New Brunswicker that sits in front of the public library in Moncton. We're very fortunate that they're here today and I'd like to invite them to come and say a little to us about their experience in conceiving and creating the sculpture. Hello, Ganong family here in a way. Um, the museum, we're very grateful to you for the day we spent actually touching his books and, and experiencing some of, witnessing some of his experience. Too close, too far. Anyway, anyway. Um, also, Mr. Reese for your book was invaluable and Mr. Guitart for the inspiration for the pose of our 
uh, sculpture from the photo cover of his book. Um, it's been a privilege working with Darren Byers. He, uh, he says that between the two of us, we make one sculptor. Um, if that's true, he's about three quarters of, the, of that sculptor. Um, he, uh, this project was delightful from the beginning, and part of the reason is the, uh, the shared characteristics between Darren and, and William Francis. Uh, they were both shy, they were both uh, anal about detail, and they're both playful. And as we got to know Mr. Ganong, we really started to like him just for being a lovely person to be with. So, uh, I'm supposed to talk about a few details here. For instance, the rivers have been mentioned. They're sketched on the back of his shirt. Um, a fellow who put up with him through 10 summers of camping and who always ended each summer with, I'm never coming back. Uh, his little portrait is under the tripod, so we've got him down below there. Anyway, Mr. J.C. Webster, who was another contemporary cartographer, illustrated here, and uh, Fanny Eckstorm, uh, who helped him with uh, interpreting uh, indigenous names. Those are a few details that are here. The, um, as you wander around, I've copied caricatures of, uh, out of his book, and it just shows how he enjoyed being outdoors. Not only were his notes scrupulous, but he had time to decorate the pages. Anyway, it's been a wonderful pleasure and an honor to have been asked to do this. Thank you all. <laughs> One more thing. And one more thing. Yes. <laughs> We've had trouble at border crossings with heads in the shower and things. But this is Darren's actual carving in the clay of the head that you see. Beautiful work. Thank you. Many thanks. Well, something tells me that our next guest, David Ganong, might not need an introduction in St. Stephen. Of course, he's the longtime executive vice president and past CEO of Ganong Brothers Limited. He was named to the Order of Canada 15 years ago for his exceptional contributions as an entrepreneur and leader in the community and province and beyond. He's a grand nephew of William Francis Ganong, and without his determination and practical leadership of the committee that guided this project, we wouldn't be here today. So I want to thank him and invite him to say a few words. Thank you, Stephen. Well, it's really my job to thank some people on behalf of the family. I think I'm the closest relative uh, on this side of the border. Uh, the closest living relatives are on the American side of the border. And for obvious reasons, unfortunately, they could not be with us here today. We did send them the live streaming information. So I hope Francis and the rest of the family are able to watch this today. If not, we'll try and get you a copy. I never had the opportunity to meet uh, William Francis. Uh, he passed away in 1941, and I was born in 1943. I did have a few stories, though, uh, that uh, my Uncle Whidden shared with me. I'll share one of them with you. It was a time when Whidden was just a young man I'm guessing, Will, about the same age as you are. And he was going on, Will, by the way, is my grandson, and he's back here with my son and daughter, and Diane is here someplace, I think. He was uh, doing a journey to go up the Tobique, and they stopped in his old Ford uh, car, 
uh, to have a to boil a, a pot just the other side of Woodstock. So he lit the fire and he put the pot on for tea and Whitten uh, got out of the car, found a, a red, a red uh, blanket or shirt and was holding it over a fence, tempting this bull. So when WF caught up with that, he went over, took Whitten by the scuff of the neck, stomped out his fire, and took him to the train station at Woodstock and said, you're going home to your father. That, it was, it was a man that took no foolishness and it was very practical in his life. The other little story I'll have is that a few years ago, some of our American uh, relatives were here and Nick Guitard decided or chose to help us do a tour up Ganong Mountain. Ganong Mountain is one of the tall mountains in northern New Brunswick. It was not named by WF, it was named in honor of him by someone else, and I'm not sure that I know who. So we went up there, stayed overnight in the middle of nowhere, and headed off to climb the mountain. Well, I was all set to go, but when it came time to get to the bottom of the mountain, I could not see my hand in front of my face. The bush was so thick. And I thought to myself, how in the world? He went up that mountain several times. The bush that he walked through, the determination that the man had in order to accomplish what he did, all came together for me at that one moment. In terms of getting to the top of the mountain, well, the top of the mountain is now a wind farm and we had the pleasure of driving up, and standing there and taking a whole lot of pictures. So, my two WF ones. I would first like to start by thanking the steering committee of the, uh, uh, for the statue. We've had several years of good work in order to make this day a reality. Mayor McEachran has been a supporter right from the beginning. Chief Akaji, who we heard from, as well as, as Mayor McEachran a few minutes ago, has been very loyal and very helpful to us. And Chief Akaji helped with the translations that we've done uh, in, on the knapsack, because it is in three different languages if you take a careful look. Ron Reese, who's got some books up there. If you haven't sold them all, Ron, I hope you can. Uh, who, who wrote the book that would, became really a, a backbone of much of the research and work that was done by the sculptors. And Nick Guitard, who also about the same time published another book on William Francis. And if you have an interest in the man, both of those books, as Stephen pointed out, would be very interesting reads. Richard Fulton from Future St. Stephen, when he was in that role, was very instrumental in helping to get us started and was on the steering committee at that time. Kendall, who is going to speak right after me, who is the current president of Future St. Stephen, has also been very instrumental in bringing together today's ceremony and in finalizing a lot of the detail that we had to go through. Alan Gilmore, who I think I saw Alan was over there, over there. Um, local historian, help in every project I can imagine, uh, certainly was very helpful here. Stephen Clayton, who you've heard from and is the master of ceremonies today, really pushed very hard for us to do this job the right way. Stephen knew the history and he was very instrumental in feeling comfortable in taking initiatives, suggesting we go longer, harder, faster in this project. Jeff Renault filled in um, after Derek O'Brien. Derek, when he was a chief uh, administrative officer, was very helpful in getting the project started. And now Jeff Renault, who served on the committee, was very helpful in getting it concluded. And finally, myself. So those are the people that got this project started and stuck with it through thick and thin. And there were some thick periods, I must admit. John Ames, who's with us here today, also in a different role with a different hat on, played a very important role. John was, was key in the initial support and of the province of New Brunswick to the project, but also, and just as importantly, he was critically important to getting this particular site designated as a provincial heritage site 
So it now is something that will show up on any of the heritage sites in the province of New Brunswick. And it should encourage people to help come to St. Stephen and see this site and, and begin to know and understand more about William Francis and his terrific commitment. I think I have to say a really special thank you to Darren and Fred. I can't believe they made any money on this project because they just wouldn't let any details go. The knapsack wasn't even part of the original plan, but they felt that we needed to have an ability to make more communication so when people came and walked by and saw the statue that there would be a bit more here that would explain what WF had done and why there is a statue for him here. So I am so delighted at the work that Darren and Fred did on this statue. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Bill Hicks, which is, who is currently the CEO of the museum, is here with us today. And Bill, in a different role when he was with the province, was instrument, instrumental in helping us to achieve the designation for this site and also for the first funding that the, that the statue committee was able to receive. We have some very important funders. These things don't happen overnight and they don't just grow out of the ground. So the province of New Brunswick was the first major one to come to the table and we thank them for that. The federal government also has been a contributor and there are two plaques here that recognize the contribution of those two. The town of St. Stephen and the Allen, your, your people that worked on this were, were incredible, including not dropping the statue yesterday morning <laughs> when they brought it in. But there's a lot of, lot of the ground here and, uh, and this was town land before it became a designated site. So thanks to the town. And finally, the Ganong family on both sides of the border made financial contributions to make this statue a reality. And so it was very much a team effort. So I understand that in going forward that there is a project between uh, St. Stephen's University and the museum. And I think Derek O'Brien on behalf of the school system that is going to be putting together some information that can be used so that in future generations, people understand the contribution that was made in the early years of this province far better than they, what we have done in our recent, recent times. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks for having an interest in it. And uh, I hope that you really enjoy the statue. Have a good day. Well, last but certainly not least, I want to call on Kendall Kaditz, who's the president of Future St. Stephen, to offer some closing remarks. Deputy Minister? I have it right here. Do you want to have that? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. As Stephen noted, there's a lot of details, and David was saying there's a lot of details. And uh, right now, I'm going to take care of one of them that I forgot. Uh, Forgot to print out the note from the uh, Deputy Minister uh, from Tourism, Heritage and Culture, Yenna Hurley. She wasn't able to attend today, but she did send a note uh, to read out. So I'm going to read that out on behalf of the province. On behalf of the Government of New Brunswick, we would like to express our deepest regrets that we were unable to attend today's event due to a variety of circumstances. Despite our absence, we wish to acknowledge the importance of WF Ganong in the history and development of our province. Mr. Ganong continues to be remembered as an important New Brunswicker thanks to his significant contributions to wildlife study, exploration, cartography, geography, and Aboriginal culture. Mr. Ganong was also a prolific author who imparted his knowledge about many different aspects of our province through his written works. We want to thank everyone involved in today's event. We hope it will inspire future generations to follow in the footsteps of WF Ganong to work toward the continued development of New Brunswick. What I was supposed to come up and do here today was wrap details up and, and say a few thank yous. Now, if you'll notice, before I came along, there were quite a few thank yous said already. There's, there's not much left for me to say thank you. But I also want to point out to it, isn't that amazing? 
Uh, this really, really is a community effort. There are so many people inspired, involved, impacted by William Francis's work. And that's a century later. Like a lot of this work happened a century ago. That's, that's impressive. That doesn't happen a lot of days. I think we really have something to be proud of here as New Brunswickers. And, uh, and I'm glad about that. Uh, I do have a, a couple of small additional thank yous that I'll, I'll toss in. Uh, that weren't mentioned. Um, uh, from my perspective on working on the project, I do want to say thank you to the authors again, Ronald Reese and Nicholas Guitard. In some way, I think uh, your work helped to inspire this to happen and kickstart everything again. I was first introduced to Ganong at Ronald Reese's uh, book launch at St. Stephen's University uh, a few years ago, and that's where my journey began with starting to understand him and, and begin to know more. So I'm very appreciative of that at, at a personal level. Um, I'd like to throw a, a special shout out in speaking of working on the details uh, to the town staff, especially. So the event staff have done great to help pull together all of the pieces here and really appreciate that. Uh, the works department has been fantastic in their support of the sculptors and myself and working together on so many details that most of you will never see and I'm not sure if any of them even get to be here today to experience it. They're off doing good work in the town again. So, uh, but amazing uh, the support of the town in this. It's, it's really impressive. Um, one, one note of thanks for me personally uh, on behalf of the committee is out to the Pescuta Makati Nation. And I want to thank you for your generosity as we figure out how we walk through our past together and walk into our future together. Uh, you've been very generous every time we interact and it's so appreciated. Thank you. Um, Stephen noted my contributions, but I want to note his. He, there's so many people, but he's one of them who I'm not sure that this project would have happened without him at several levels and several points along the way and has been such a welcome to work with and cares and knows so much about the project. So thank you, Stephen. Uh, I think that's it. That's what I got from my thank you list. The rest has been covered by others and I appreciate it. The final notes that I want to say are one, if you want to uh, get a copy of the book, Ronald Reese is here and his books are available here on site today. Uh, they're also available at uh, La Belin. Uh, the whale store in St. Andrews and Nicholas Guitard's books are available at the Chocolate Museum in town and also La Belin in St. Andrews. Uh, Nicholas Guitard's books are available on goose if you want to order it online and both of them are available at several online vendors as well so you can find them around. Uh, highly recommend them to get into the story and, and get to know William Francis a little bit more personally. Uh, other than that I uh, just want to note that there are refreshments at the gazebo behind you there if you want to stay. Uh, the town staff have those. We encourage you to enjoy and explore and also to hopefully as you go forward from today think of this event as a catalyst uh, that we all walk forward being maybe a little more prepared and a little bit better inspired to understand uh, the history and the preservation of New Brunswick's land and the people that are in it. Thank you very much. Enjoy.